There are so many advantages to being able to work from home and I am so grateful to be home with my family, but one of the major challenges when you have young children is avoiding constant interruptions. So this is gonna be my backup keyboard now. This one, yeah. right? Yeah, Can you show me where the batteries go again, just in case I forget? Oh yeah, yeah. There. See? And if you record, you can record it if you plug it in there. I can show you. You just let it play by itself. Oh. It repeats itself too. Oh. So if you don't remember it, it just repeats. Oh, that's awesome. And repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. And... So I took to putting a sign on my door a while ago that said, not available, until our four-year-old son copied me and I, that just felt wrong. So I recently changed the sign. Mixed results so far, but I feel better about the tone of the messaging. Like my new keyboard. See that poster on the wall? Over the course of the past six months, I've come to basically ignore it. I've made plenty of these, but not so many of these. In fact, the only thing I've really made more of is hair. Still haven't had a haircut since like early February, but that's another story. That's not entirely true. I did make one video, like the previous vlog episode, which you might notice is missing on YouTube. I was proud of it, I was excited to share it with you. It was all about four musicians who inspired me so much they changed the course of my life and I included some clips, some YouTube clips of those musicians and consequently as soon as I published the video it was blocked by YouTube and the record label and taken down, which was a bummer. I spent a lot of time on it, I thought it was great and like I said, I, I literally just used some existing live clips on YouTube. I didn't even put anything in there from these artists' albums. And it's just weird because you can go on YouTube and search for songs and those albums that are randomly uploaded by all sorts of people and they exist, they haven't been taken down, but my video where I was, it was basically like an open love letter to these people and their music and encouraging you to go check out this music and that got taken down, so that was a bummer. If you wanna see it, I did put it on my website privately. There is a link, I'll put a link below this video or somewhere around here. So you're more than welcome to go check it out. I hope you do, I think you'll enjoy it, but yeah. It's from now on, the secret vlog, it's not on YouTube. I also wrote a saxophone quartet a little earlier this summer, which, although it hasn't been recorded or released yet, the process of doing that was both cathartic and creatively fulfilling. It was wonderful to be on a deadline for a project. I, I, I thrive on deadlines, and this whole pause has made me realize that so much of how I approach practicing and music and stuff is, is geared towards the outcomes, like, writing, recording, performing, rehearsing, all these things. To have all of that taken away, I have found it's like, it's just called into question, well, so many things for me. Um, I, I mean, I've always had issues with... <laughs> Are you trying to come in? Do you see how my foamy worker works? Your foamy worker? Yeah. You want to go with the diamond okay or the juice maker oh the juice maker whoa so you have to go outside okay <laughs> there it is oh, oh it's right there it went through here it worked yeah well, okay okay where were we well where does it it leave me i mean i've always battled with practicing mostly from a too much to do, not enough time standpoint. And, you know, I'm efficient with the, with what I do in that practice time that I carve out for the most part. But I've never been somebody who's just truly excited to be, well, I shouldn't say never, but I don't think of myself as somebody who's generally just been excited to have unbridled time to practice the saxophone by myself in a room. But guess what? <laughs>
I got a text the other day from my buddy and longtime musical collaborator, Yannick Guzdala, just letting me know that it had been exactly six months since we came home from our European tour. Six months since playing a concert, since playing a show. Six months since playing music with other musicians. Six months since playing music for people. And on top of all of the things that have been going on in the world, I think I've also been mourning that, that loss of musical community and fellowship and you know, all the things, like all the things that one practices for. So my quest right now is to refocus and stop looking for or using excuses and start looking for opportunities. And there are a lot of opportunities right now and there's so much to be grateful for. This ability to be home and be with my family is absolutely incredible. Mm, my, so say, mine is not, can you make it like Hudson so that's on the top of my head? That's a uh -huh. Hey, get your mouth out of my <laughs> I'm stopping. Yep. I am not stopping. I just need to rekindle a joyous approach to music. I need to make sure that I am shifting practicing from the liabilities column on my balance sheet to the assets column. And you could argue that it always should have been there and you wouldn't be wrong, but for whatever reason, that's just the lens that I've traditionally viewed it through is like, oh, I need to practice. I have to practice so that I'll be ready to play. That's been a large part of it. And right now the be ready to play part is just, it's just me. The reason I went to get this book. So, I mean, obviously I've been getting my butt kicked by the resistance. That's nothing new. It's just been amplified during the pandemic, but, um, this book I read a while back and it was enlightening in that Gretchen Rubin, the author, identifies four personality types, one of which, the one that I am, she calls the obliger. And this is somebody that meets outer expectations but resists inner expectations. Woo! Basically, in a nutshell, I'm a person who processes my world outwardly. I tend to make the most sense of things for me when I verbalize them, communicate them, share them with others. Otherwise, they just sit in my head bouncing around like a bunch of... This room, perfect visual representation of what my brain feels like lately. Clutter, so much clutter. Stuff falling all over itself. I'm not, I'm not sure what to do with it. So I have a three part plan to get myself out of this rut, to get unstuck, to get some creative forward momentum going again. One, listen to more music. I find it's been too easy to just consume other things, other forms of media, whether that's Netflix or a podcast or God forbid the news. My balance has, has shifted too far in the direction of consumption versus creation. And I need to reconcile that. And one of the things I need to do is <clears throat> listen to more music that gets me excited and inspired. Seems obvious, but specifically I am making my way back towards some of the recordings that got me so excited in the earliest years of my journey. Number two is to not just practice more, but to focus on developing a daily practice. And I don't also in that regard, I don't just mean practicing every day. I mean developing a daily practice like one does with yoga or medita meditation. Other things that bonus chapters I would like to add in, but first I need to get the practicing part right. See, for me, if I practice in a day or if I don't, the difference is less in what happens to my playing and more what happens internally to my chemistry. I'm a nicer person, both to myself and to my family, when I've kind of taken care of business, so to speak, on the horn, done things that I need to do. So I wanna develop like and this shouldn't be difficult. I'm sure some will watch this and just laugh like, what, you you dope? Like, how is that even difficult for you? But it is. Uh, to get like two to three hours a day, I should totally be able to do that now. I want to be excited about it. I wanna miss it if I don't get to it. Not just because I felt like it was an item on my to-do list, but something that really brings me a lot of joy. And I had a good three-day streak going last week. And then I broke it. And part of why I broke it, I think, is just that accountability thing. That um, two to three hours, five days a week, that would be great. That would be uh, that would work for me. And 
speaking of practicing, because um, this has been a topic that's, that's always going on and coming up in my virtual studio, but recently it's been something that uh, come to the fore. Just people, different people expressing their personal challenges with practicing and progress, etc. And I have been thinking about this a lot. Um, what makes practicing the most worthwhile for me is to have a balance between mechanics and mystery. So if I, whether this is like, you know, if I have two hours and one of them is spent on mechanics, like craft work and other on mystery artwork, um, or if it's like a couple of days of really double downing on double doubling down on mechanics and then a couple of days of mystery, just in, within a semblance of time, within a, a session or a day or a couple of days in a week to have this balance. Mechanics for me is anything that I already know and am aware of, but just need to sharpen, do better, do slower. <laughs> All the fundamentals and such these are things that I'm already I already know about and I just need to do them more consistently cleanly better whatever mystery is playing along with some music I'm unfamiliar with transcribing a solo I haven't dug into before <laughs> Learning a new song, playing a song I already know, but maybe in a different key. different, trying some odd time signature work. Spending time at the piano, getting lost in learning a tune. For me, that's a good way to balance the chemistry of practicing. And number three is to share more, to create more and to share more with you because the process of distilling the things that I find most uh, exciting and fascinating about numbers one and two, that kind of gets my juices flowing, my creative juices flowing, so that's important for me to do. Otherwise, it's all just stuff kind of bouncing around in my head and, and until I kind of get it out, um, I, I, I get stuck, I can't really move forward, so. That's the third part. I really do hope that you are 
holding up well, that you're safe and healthy, and uh, let's do this again very soon. <laughs>